I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time once again for Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. And this week is to make up for last week when we had no show. So, sorry about that. But anyway, it's been very busy this spring and summer. Have you noticed that? Don't know if it has been for you, but it has been for me. Lots going on. Anyway... We do have a show, though, this week, so enjoy. Share and enjoy. <laughs> For those of you that are Hitchhikers fans and know about the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. Yes. Anyway, um, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. We are also proud members of the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Ah. All righty, then. My my MacBook just went nutty there for a second. This week I'm using my MacBook Pro. Get where you can see the Apple logo there. It's a 17-inch MacBook Pro, so it's pretty big. That's because the battery on my Chromebook is kaput at the moment. I have not charged it. And rather than taking the time to charge it, I went, eh! I'll use the MacBook. <laughs> so there you go. What is it doing? It's I guess I haven't launched it in so long. It's catching up on all of my my things in Chrome. It's catching up on anyway. It's driving me nutty. Um so the show this week. Let's get to that, shall we? Okay. We have on the blog, the blog of course is drbill.tv, D-R-B-I-L-L.tv as it says there on the screen. And on the blog this week I have a video off of YouTube about the new Steam controller. There's a new controller for Steam, particularly if you're using a Steam box, but even if you're not, there's a new controller. You should, you should watch this video. It's actually quite cool, and it looks like the Steam Controller would be very handy. And I didn't mean that to be a pun, but it is, because it's a handheld controller. You get the idea. Anyway, next item. So you should watch it. Go ahead and watch it, and you'll get all the information about the new Steam Controller. But, next item. LastPass loses data. I don't know why I find that hard to say, but it's it's a little hard to say. Anyway, as a LastPass user, last see I last pass, not past. Sounds, you know, past tense that way. As a LastPass user, I got this notice. And the notice says, Dear LastPass user, we wanted to alert you that recently our team discovered and immediately blocked. Suspicious activity on our network. No encrypted user vault data was taken. However, other data, including email addresses and password reminders, was compromised. We are confident that the encryption algorithms that we use will sufficiently protect our users. To further ensure your security, we are requiring verification by email when logging into a new device or IP address, and will be prompting users to update their master passwords. We apologize for the inconvenience, but ultimately we believe this will make uh, will better protect LastPass users. Thank you for your understanding and for using LastPass. Now, keep in mind your passwords weren't compromised, okay? But they did possibly get your email address, and if you've been emailing anybody, eh, they probably already have your email address. So not a big deal, but I appreciate LastPass telling us what's going on that should actually give you more confidence in them as an organization because they could have just sat on their hands and said, no, we're not telling anybody because really nothing was leaked of any note. So, I'll cut them some slack. 
All right, next item, LibreOffice. Now, you know that I really like LibreOffice. It's my favorite Office Suite product. It's open source. It's free. It's wonderful. Everybody that I tell about it, I was just at a, at a conference here a few months back, and I was telling a, a bunch of folks there at the conference about LibreOffice, and they were like, what, what? Let me write that down because they wanted the information so desperately. Why? Because Microsoft Office costs a lot of money and it's gotten more and more complicated to use. So LibreOffice is awesome. And of course, you can go to LibreOffice at LibreOffice.org. And that's L-I-B-R-E, Libre, meaning free, Office, O-F-F-I-C-E, dot O-R-G. Okay? So, however, if you are a Mac user as I'm using my Mac right now. If you're a Mac user, and I, by the way, have LibreOffice already installed, but it's now easier to install LibreOffice for your Mac, whether it's a Mac Pro or, you know, MacBook Air or whatever Mac you happen to be using, you know, Mac Pro machine, whatever, you can now go to the official Mac Apple Store, okay? And LibreOffice is actually there. So that's pretty cool. I was quite excited about that. On June 18th, Collabora announced that they have added two versions of the popular LibreOffice open source Office Suite software to Mac, uh, Apple's Mac OS X operating systems on the Mac App Store. Now, you can get the official version from Collabora for $9.99, or you can just get the free version, which is... I mean, that's really the way to go, if you ask me. But, you know, if you want, as they say in the biz, a single throat to choke, then you can get your support from Calabra. So, whichever way you want to go, you can go that direction. Alrighty. Next item. Oculus Touch is revealed at a press conference. Oculus had a press conference, and they showed off their new controllers, which look like, they look like power bands. I don't know if you've ever... It's a superhero -y thing. Power bands. That's what it looks like. But actually, they're just controllers for the end of your hands. You know? Cool. So there's a video on the blog. Of course, the blog being drbill.tv, D-R-B-I-L-L.tv. And you can watch the video of the coverage of the press conference and see how it all works. Cool. Now, here's a bit of geek culture. I'm going to categorize it as geek culture. It's actually kind of interesting. And that is this. Supergirl, the pilot, was leaked to the torrents. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about torrents. But if you know what it is, then shame on you. <laughs> yes. Torrents, a way to get stuff that you didn't purchase. Naughty, naughty. However, here's the thing. According to this article in Forbes magazine, CBS may have released this pilot to the torrents to get some buzz going. Now, the same thing happened with the Flash uh, pilot back a few years ago, a year or so ago. Uh, they released it early to get a little buzz going in the old social networking arena. So it's quite possible that they released this on purpose. Now, if they did good on them, as they say in the English world, as in Britain, the UK, they don't say that here around the South. Way to go, dude. You know, something like, I don't know what you, how you want to say it. But anyway... I'm glad that they did if they did because this is the kind of free publicity, as they say, that you can't buy. Once you release it like this and people start talking about it online, particularly with social networking, tweeting back and forth and all these things, then you'll get a lot more buzz about it than if you just showed the random commercial on a medium that very few people are watching these days anyway. But to get the geeks out there, like me, this might be the way to do it. And so I think CBS probably made a calculated, shall we say, publicity stunt 
to release this to the torrents. It's in 1080p format. And it has the entire episode. And it's interesting to me that in the, the actual release, there is no warning labels. If you got this, then you're evil. None of that. It's just released. Whereas Flash had a warning label on it that said, if you see this, you are a bad dude. So I'm just saying, it's highly likely that they released it on purpose. Yes. Now, am I endorsing you going out there and downloading it? Why? No, of course not. That would be wrong. Just saying. However, let's move on. Whoa! Geek Stop for the Week time. Thank you, Fred, for reminding me rather abruptly. Anyway, Geek Stop for the Week this week is in the regard of security that we were talking about earlier. It is Chrome Pass. Chrome Pass, interesting name. But what it does is it allows you to run this little tiny, tiny program that will give you a list of all your uh, passwords in Chrome. Pretty handy. So if you go to a website and Chrome has remembered your password and you're thinking, what if I, what if Chrome gets corrupted? What if, what if this happens? What if, that, what if I'm not on this computer where it remembered it? Then you need to run this program on the computer while you still can and get the list of passwords. And it even allows you to save them as a common delimited file, which of course can be open in LibreOffice or Excel if you have to. Anyway, so cool. So it's a neat little program. It's by Nearsoft, our good old buddies at Nearsoft that give us so many wonderful software Geek Software of the Weeks. So how cool is that? And then we also have an, uh, an article here on a bill that is being considered by the Senate. It is voted to approve a bill aimed at curbing abusive lawsuits by patent trolls. Now these are people that acquire patents and then go sue people that are doing actual good work for the sheer purpose of getting tons of money without actually doing anything. So, good thing to go out there and try to find the patent trolls and bonk them on the head. I'm all for it. <coughs> Excuse me. My throat is getting dry, which happens sometimes when I'm sitting in here under all the hot lights in a hot day in a hot room talking. <laughs> So, sorry about that. But anyway, I hate it when my eyes start watering and I can't talk. So, one more, one more thing to talk about. And then I can go get a drink of water. The official Raspberry Pi case is out. It's only nine bucks. Actually, it's a little less than nine bucks. But it is white and raspberry red. How appropriate is that? There's a picture right there. So, more than three years after its launch, there is now an official Raspberry Pi case. Now, there have been a lot of Raspberry Pi cases available, but this is the official one with the actual official Raspberry Pi logo melted, you know, into the case or pressed or however they do it. I don't know, but it's, you know, it's, you can feel it. The little logo there. Since the release of the Model A and B in 2012 and the follow-up releases of the B Plus and the Raspberry Pi 2, an official case has always been a rather obvious omission from the product stack. And of course, there have been tons of other cases, 3D printed plastic, Lego bricks, and even wooden cases available. But this is the official one. So, given that <coughs> my throat is drying up entirely, I will stop here and pick it up next time. Remember, until the next time that the doctor is out of here.
Dr. Bill the Computer Promotion is a production of DrBillDaily.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.